I'd like to talk about giving robots a sense of touch, but I'm a vision guy. I spent my life studying vision, mostly studying uh, surface perception. You may have seen this illusion, where it's hard to believe that the patch marked A is the same shade of gray as the patch marked B, but that's an aspect of my work in surface perception. Now, when my kids were born, I became interested in a different aspect of surface perception, which is the way they use their fingers to explore the world with touch. And here's Robin holding her favorite blanket and enjoying how soft and fuzzy it is. And here's Robin with her favorite stuffed animal, feeling the fur, and then she gets interested in that uh, tag, and she has to feel that and see how it moves when she manipulates it and back to the fur, and then she loses interest in that and starts getting interested in the chair, feeling the smooth surface of the chair. And this is what kids just do all day. They discover the world through their fingers, through their sense of touch. And I began to wonder, uh, what would it take for us to give the same capability to robots? Human hands are, are soft and sensitive. They have soft, sensitive fingers. Robots generally have hard, insensitive fingers. So what kind of technology can we develop that would give softness like human fingers and high sensitivity like human fingers? And I came up with this thing called Gelsite, uh, a chunk of clear elastomer, just clear rubber. It's coated with a special reflective paint. And we're uh, pressing into it with an Oreo. And then in the middle, if you look from underneath, you can see how the Oreo is distorting the surface. And if you want to calculate that uh, precisely, you can uh, illuminate it with three different colors of LEDs and use a computer vision technique called photometric stereo to extract an exact 3D model of the shape of those distortions. So we can use this. Uh, to have fun, looking at all kinds of uh, things as we press them into our gel site. Or we can build a robot finger. And here's the robot finger. There's a camera and some LEDs inside, and then the chunk of gel site on top. And somebody is pressing and wiggling a screw on top of it. And in the middle, you see, we added some dots to the skin. And we can track those dots to see the motions and forces that the skin is experiencing. And on the right is the 3D shape that's pressing into the skin. OK, now that we've got good robot fingers, what can we do with them? Well, suppose you had a home robot, and you wanted it to help you out with the chores. Like, suppose you wanted it to fold laundry, like a towel here. Folding a towel is a very tactile task. You slide your fingers along the edge of the towel until you find your way to the corner and then you do the fold. So if we can give robots sensitive fingers, we can ask it to do the same thing. We're teaching this robot what a towel feels like. It feels the edge, then it feels the middle, then it feels the corner, it feels another edge. Then we fold it over so it can feel what it's like when it's folded and double thick. There's a fold. There's another fold. And then we can go back and do more edges. Now that the robot knows what a towel feels like on all different parts of the towel, we can put it to work. Here the robot uh, grabs the edge, slides its way down, feeling its way along the edge until it feels the corner. Once it gets to the corner, it knows it can do the fold. Let's see that again. It's got the edge between its fingers. It feels its way along until it finds the corner, and then it does the fold. Let's try another task. Here the robot's going to learn what a cable feels like when it slips between its fingers. It learns what it's like when it moves to different orientations and positions, and it learns what it feels like when it slides back and forth. 
And we can challenge that robot, once it's learned that, to try to keep the cable between its fingers while somebody else tries to mess with it. So it knows how to move its hand in order to adjust for those outside forces to keep the cable centered between its fingers. And now we can add another challenge, which is to plug a headphone cable into a phone. And it could slide its way down the cable until it feels the uh, end of the cable and then plug it into the phone. So these are some of the things we can do when a robot has a good sense of touch. But I'd like to go back to the beginning. When Kimo Johnson and I were first working on GelSight, we were amazed at the level of detail we could get out of it. Greater detail than you can get out of a human finger in, in terms of touch sensitivity. And the picture on the left shows Kimo's finger. Kimo has a little cut on his finger from uh, some earlier accident. Uh, but you can see all kinds of detail. And on the right, you see the level of detail you can get out of that finger. You can see the ridges. And you can even see the little pores, the little sweat glands that are in the middle of those ridges. And when we show these pictures around, people in industry would look at them and say, wow, that would be a great tool for doing high resolution surface inspection, something that many people have to do in industry. And after hearing that many times, we decided to do a startup called GelSight Inc. And on the left, you see one of the instruments the company makes. Uh, and in the middle shows somebody using it to inspect the edge of a turbine blade. And the question is, uh, well, there's a, there's a nick in the edge of that blade. And the question is, how big is it? And on the right, you can see the magnified view of the output of that touch sensor, which is telling you the, the exact shape of the uh, edge of that blade. And people in many different industries are finding this useful for many different tasks. But what's most interesting is that there are many unexpected uses uh, that are really cool. For example, biologists are using the same devices to measure fish scales, as shown on the left, and frog skin, as shown on the right. And these are surfaces that are difficult to measure and characterize by any other tools. Another example, the Norwegian ski team uses gel site to measure snow texture, as shown on the left, and the bottom of skis, as shown on the right. So we're constantly surprised by all the different uses people are finding. And uh, as a result of all these different ideas we keep hearing, uh, we've released a new product, which is just a really simple sensor. It's about the size of an ice cube. And we don't know what it's good for. We're trying to find out. Uh, Kimo, do you want to uh, show us the sensor? So it's the first device of this size and at this price point that the company's made. And it can do a lot of the things you just saw on the slide. For example, I'm pushing this screw into it. And what you're seeing in the live view here is the real-time 3D shape of how the skin of this sensor is deforming. I apologize for those who can't see it over there. Let's see if I can. Oh, they got it on the screen. Awesome. Here are the threads of this screw. And it has enough detail to see the pitch of the threads. Here's the button on my shirt. And you can see the sensor is agnostic to the material properties of what it touches. Really, it's like your skin. Anything it touches, it can sense. And finally, the texture of my hair. <laughs> or you can see that I need to shave. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Ted. Okay. okay, let me just say one, just finish up. So we can provide superhuman tactile sensing. It's great for robotics, defect inspection, frog skin, and other things nobody has thought of yet. And we'd love to hear your ideas on how you can use tactile sensing. Thank you. Woo! Let's hear it for Ted.